All right, welcome to a very special edition of uh, Beginner Breakdown. I am your host, uh, Mike Comer, and uh, tonight we'll be talking about how, uh, how defense, if you establish a defense early on, you'll be able to win easier, okay? So in the first game we'll show, we'll show where uh, Black is a higher rated player and he doesn't care about defense and it gets into a wild game. And then, so we'll show kind of how not to play. And then in the other games, we'll show how, how the higher rated player, you know, spent a lot of time playing defense early and then let his attack flourish later. Okay, so in the first game, uh, White starts out with the move D4, Black plays C6. White plays C4, Black plays D5. So then white plays knight to c3. Okay, so, so this is a very common opening here, okay? The reason why black doesn't want to take this pawn is because then it allows the move e4, giving white a big center. Look at all the squares he's attacking in uh, black's camp here, okay? So that's why they don't just take the pawn. It looks free, but actually after e4, it's going to be very hard to... Uh, to maintain that pawn anyway, okay? So you don't wanna give up uh, your strength here, okay? So, so right now, black has control of e4 and black has control of e5. If he takes, he no longer has control of e4. All right, so, so black plays uh, knight f6, uh, protects the pawn and uh, puts another player on this pivotal e4 square. So knight f3. Bishop attacks the knight. This is not a good move, un unfortunately. It looks good, but what can white play with his knight? How would he play to attack the bishop here? Knight e5. Knight e5. Excellent, Mario. So he plays knight e5, and, and he's just, he's doing, he's doing great. Okay? But luckily, uh, White decides they don't want double pawns. They don't want to play e3 because it would block in this dark squared bishop. So they decide to play queen to d3. Not recommended. So after bishop takes the knight, queen takes. And, um, and now black can play e6. And they're not blocking in uh, a light squared bishop because the light squared bishop is uh, traded. Okay, so they play the move a3 to prevent uh, the pin um, bishop to b4. Okay, so they didn't want that to happen, so they played the move a3. So now pawn takes c4. He's given up control of e4 because he thinks, black thinks he can hold on to this pawn after e4. Black could play, uh, well, b5. Or what else do you think they play in the game here? Instead of b5, what's another way to, to one, protect this pawn and possibly win material? So black can simultaneously uh, protect this pawn and possibly capture something. Anybody see it? So, so always in when you're playing chess, right? Look for your captures and your checks. Very important. So, so if you count up all the possible captures on this board, I only see three for black, and only one of them doesn't lose material. That's probably the answer. So anybody see a capture for black where he doesn't lose material? They go ahead and just shout it out if you think you know the answer. Queen, to D4. Queen takes D4. Excellent. Okay. So I won a pawn and I protected this pawn. So they obviously my queen gets attacked. I mean, that's what happens. I would love to take this, but unfortunately the knight's protecting it. And I'm not going to capture the knight. So I just retreat the queen back. But I lost that pawn. But I'm still up a up a pawn because I've taken two of his and he's only got one back in return. All right, so now I decide I get my knight out 
And then White, what do you think he does here to get his uh, 9 billion point piece, the king, as safe as can be? Castle. Excellent. Okay, so, so now even though White's down a pawn, his king is safe. You know, he's got lines to attack the king, some open files here. Uh, so he's got some compensation for the pawn for sure. So. So I'm playing black, right? And I want to get the game over with quick, right? So I want to threaten checkmate here. There's two different ways I can threaten checkmate. One's good, one's bad. What do you think I do? So obviously, knight here threatens checkmate, but the queen would just take it. So what's the other way to threaten checkmate? Bishop to d6, putting the queen and bishop in a battery, okay? When the queen and bishop are in the same diagonal, it's called a battery, and I'm, I'm eyeing at this h2 square. So white sees it. He's got different ways to stop it. He could put his bishop here, but that would be no good because I have two attackers on f4, and he's only got one defender, so I would lose it. Or h3 wouldn't stop it because I would just come down and go checkmate. So the only other way to possibly stop it is with g3. Okay? So, so now his threat, if I'm not careful, is bishop here. So I might want to do something about that. So I play the move g5, computer recommended actually. So I'm pretty proud of myself. G5, even though, but now my king won't be able to castle over there, but I'm not really thinking about castling. All I'm thinking about is getting checkmate. So white plays a really bad move here, takes the pawn. So what do you think I instantly do? Just take the bishop, right? Free bishop, thank you. And so now he's, uh, he just lost the piece for no really apparent reason. So, so this is when you really wanna punish your opponents here, okay? Because they're, not, they're, they're uh, not thinking right at this point. So one blunder and then it all starts to steamroll down. As you'll see, white played pretty decently okay at least his first you know 12 moves or so now since he lost the piece you'll see his play diminish uh, exponentially here all right so rook e1 not too bad he's threatening a, a fork here possibly so get the knight out to attack the queen and the bishop and guess what didn't see it so he retreats his queen. He saw that his queen was under attack, but he didn't also see that his bishop's under attack. So take it. Now, how, so it looks like, you know, white just lost another piece, but is there any way he can get uh, this piece back? He can play, uh, white can play B3. B3, excellent, Mario. Okay, good. So, so, oh, uh, tactic in chess is called removing the defender. So you see how this bishop is being attacked by the queen. It's only being protected by the knight. So if we can remove him from c4 by playing b3, for instance, that he moves, and then boom, we got the uh, we got the bishop. So very good tactic, removing the defender, or sometimes it's also called removing the guard. What was played is. Uh, attack h4, attacks the queen. So now I bring the queen over there to, to protect uh, the bishop and the knight. So now even moves like b3 don't work. So they attack again. So move my queen. So obviously I'm attacking g3 a lot and I'm also attacking an undefended piece, the knight. So let's say he protects the knight. Okay, that was good. All right, now, remember, I want to get this game over quick. You know, I'm higher rated than this guy. So, 
So I want to threaten, uh, threaten to do a lot of damage to him. Okay, so, so notice I got my queen and bishop coming down on g3 here, okay? If g3 falls, his king is going to fall, okay? So who do you think I bring over to uh, attack g3 here? The rook, excellent. So if, if he ignores my threat here, and let's say plays a4 or something, you know, I'll just go ahead and take. Check. Hope he goes there and checkmate him. But even if he goes to uh, f1, I'm still in the money here because I'll play check, forking his queen and king, and, um, you know, I'll get, well, Well, I just hope he goes to h1 and checkmate him. If he goes, if he goes to f1 here, I might have to, uh, I might have to consider something else because my bishop is hanging. I'll probably castle, and um, and it's going to be tough for him to, him to stop all my all my good threats. Or maybe I would calculate a little more. But rook to g3, I'm preparing to do a lot of damage. So he sees it. So he protects g3 anyway and attacks my knight simultaneously. All right. So now, so now I castle. Okay. So now, so now I know because I've calculated if he takes the knight, this rook sacrifice would actually work for sure because I've got, uh, I've got a uh, check and then that could bring the other rook in and the game's over. Okay, so that one I actually did calculate. Okay, so, in, so he doesn't take my knight. He decides to defend uh, g3 again with uh, knight to e2. And now, who else besides white's queen is actually attacking the knight? The rook on c1. It was a discovered attack. So now I really do have to move the knight. Knight back to b6. But you see, even though I'm up by, uh, you know, I got six pieces and he only has four, you know, my king really isn't uh, the safest piece on the board, and he really should be. And, I mean, he's still got uh, chances to do... Uh, for some damage here. So, so b5, so he's going to go for it. Try to break open the c file and checkmate me. So, who thinks I should just take the pawn on b5? <laughs> or who knows? Wow. No. Yeah, that, that would be a big mistake because this pawn is in a pin. And when pawns or pieces are in pins, they're actually not doing what you think they're doing. So he would take and then he would laugh and laugh and laugh as I can never take the back the queen. Okay? So that's what he was hoping for. <laughs> but I knew better. So I touch my queen as if I'm going to take it and I take this pawn instead. And he's like, oh. <laughs> so okay. So he, he plays queen to c3 and uh, attacks my knight. And uh, now he's really got piling on the C file here. So I bring the knight up to, to D5 to attack the queen. And now queen to C2. All right, moment of truth here. Okay, so as I said before, I have six pieces. He only has four. So I'm up a significant amount of material. There's no real way to say who's on offense and who's on defense here because it looks like we're both trying to be on offense, right? I got the G file, but he's got the C file. So none of us are really on offense or defense. Or we're, maybe we're both on offense. So I'm up material. Maybe I'm on offense, but I don't see a checkmate here. So you might as well trade pieces. Just consolidate the position, and then uh, you'll be a winner here. All right, so he takes back. So now, you know, I'm up a lot of pieces still. But if I don't get a plan here, this, this could take all night to win this position, right? 
And if he manages to just stick me with a bishop and knight at the end and no pawns, I'm not going to be able to checkmate him because I'm not a grandmaster. I don't know how to checkmate with a bishop and a knight. And obviously, if it leaves me with two knights, it's impossible. So, so what am I going to do? So let's get a plan here. If you were looking for a, a plan for black here, what, what do you like? What do you, what do you really like about your position here? Rather than you have more pieces than him, okay? That's a given. Well, you can probably start gathering pawns with a bishop takes a three. Okay, so, so well, well, what is white's threat? If it was white's move on the board here, first we have to ask ourselves this. If it was white to move, what move would he play instantly? Nope. But you're kind of on the right track. Is there anything? Remember, I always look for your captures and your checks. So what does he play? He'd take our pawn, right? And then, but it's not his move, so he can't take it. Okay. So, so you think, oh, let's just protect the pawn. No. I mean, we could, but we have better, OK? So look, this can become a passed pawn, OK? So that should be our idea. Get a passed pawn and win. Passed pawns are meant to be pushed, as probably everybody's heard, OK? So push it. So now you got a passed pawn, and now you're doing well. So now he taunts me, OK? He's like, uh, you, you can't move, you can't take my knight, okay? But, I mean, did that move even do anything? I don't know. So, so we play king to b8, one, to protect our a pawn, and two, so now this is a real threat now. So knight back to b3. So, guess what we're going to do? We're just going to keep pushing the pawn. So now knight's up. And uh, now, now Mario, now we can take his pawn, okay? It's free, right? And obviously, we can't take this uh, because the knight's protecting uh, the pawn. All right, so rook a2 attacks our bishop. So we got to move it. So we attack the other rook. And now he decides he's going to play some mad offense here. Okay, so, so this is what you want. You want your rooks doubled on a, on a good line. Unfortunately, the execution just doesn't work. Because, okay, so he's threatening to play rook takes a7. But luckily, we have a cool move with our bishop to neutralize the threat. What do you think it is? So you see our bishop. It basically, chess pretty simple. If, uh, like, what is on the same line? Like, you got a dark square bishop, right? And then you look, and it's like, oh man, look, he's got his, his uh, rook on a dark square and a knight on a dark square on the same diagonal line. So guess what? More often than not, just put that bishop on that same line. Uh, fork, double attack, right? So, I mean, he's, he's like, eh, no big deal, no big deal, but it is a big deal because it, it, it killed your whole threat. All right, so now we attack his uh, rook. So now the guy's just frustrated, so he gets some spite checks in here. Check one, check two, but his checks really do nothing. And now we take his, his last hope, the pawn. So he takes up here, but now we have a simple win. What move do you think we play here? You think work the D1 check? <laughs> no. What are we trying to do in this position? Get a queen. So c3. He can take all our stuff over there. We don't care. And um, check. Get him out of this little hole here. And uh, check him. Or just take his stuff. Check. And now we have checkmate in one move. Can we see it? It's the guy you least suspect the pawn <laughs> yep you yeah. least suspect have you found the checkmate yet
Bishop F6, checkmate, excellent. And uh, and the game is over. So now here's a game, another game, where uh, White decides to play really solid and get castled. And uh, the player playing black just tries to just rush up all his uh, queenside pawns and, and try to be the champ that way. So let's see how the champ does playing like that. All right, so white plays e4, black counters c5. Knight f3, knight c6. So this is called the Sicilian defense. There's a lot of different ways white can proceed here. You can play bishop to b5, could play d4, could even play c3. But uh, white decides to uh, bring out his knight to c3 here. Okay. So black plays the move d6, and white brings out his bishop to c4, eyeing the, the crucial f7 square here. All right. So now black decides, I'm going to try to win the bishop the old-fashioned way. Okay. So a6. The, the, yeah, a very, a very barbaric trap. B5. So, so now Black is hoping, hoping with all his might, mm -hmm. that Bishop goes to B3. And then, of course, C4. Have you guys done this in your shop a lot? I've seen it. seen it? All right. P please don't fall for it anymore. Now you know. <laughs> you don't need to fall for that. Okay. And so, so it just goes this way, okay? All right. And uh, bishop d5. So bishop protects it with b7. Rook e1. And so now black attacks. And so bishop takes check. Bishop takes. So, so let's look at this position here. So white should be really happy because his king is safe. His 9 billion point piece, all safe. And so now black says, oh, I'm happy too, because I've got the two bishops. But look, it's move, uh, let's say, uh, nine coming up for white, OK? And black really is at one step closer to castling than he was at move one. You think it's going to hurt him, or it's like, no, that's no big deal. We'll see, OK. So white plays the move d4. This is an excellent idea. When, uh, you're, when your king is safe, you know, and uh, your opponent is in the center of the board still sitting there, break open the center because that's where the king is, and you got to do it fast, okay? Because if you wait two or three moves, guess what? He played bishop e7, knight f6, and got castled. So time is of the essence, okay? Don't monkey around. So d4. So now black decides, hey, I'm going to attack you again, moving more, more pawns. But white's not having any of it. He's going to make a threat greater or equal to, uh, to his own here. So he plays d5, attacking the bishop. So he's like, all right, I'll take it. He's like, all right, I'll take it. It's like, I'll take it. He's like, well, I better take it. All right. And now, here comes the moment of truth in the game. Black plays the move queen to b6, thinking, this is great. I just forked the, the pawn on c6 and the bishop on b2. What are you going to do? So white knows, hey, this king is in the center. He can't castle. This is going to be great. But if I just move my bishop back somewhere, OK, and then he takes, you know, even if I try a move like e5 here, I can just play uh, d5, OK? So he's got to act quick. So white decides, I'm going to sacrifice my bishop for, uh, for a great attack here. So he can't resist. He can't resist, right? A free bishop, OK? So now uh, pawn takes d6. So he's got two connected passed pawns on the sixth rank. 
and one of them's threatening check. So, woo. But, but black is up a bishop for this compensation here. Okay, so he brings his queen back to b6. All right, so what move does white make in this position to protect the pawn on c6? And there's a lot of different ones, right? Probably c7, no. c7 wouldn't work because then, uh, well, Take with the queen here. Uh, you could play check. Check looks so tempting, right? But then I get my king there, and he's blocking these pawns from doing anything. Ninety-five. 95. Yeah, it, it it is possible in that position. Um, after d7 check, uh, he might play king to. Yeah. I don't know which one I would play, but it, you can think about it. All right, but you could just play knight e5 now. And then d7 check, followed by uh, knight takes f7. All right, so, so now uh, after knight e5, black can't handle the pressure anymore. You know, if he plays a move like this, uh, the computer will probably say, game's over. Yeah, d7 check, plus 20 points. <laughs> so, so he can't handle the pressure after d7. So, so he just takes the, the, the uh, pawn here. So uh, queen takes the bishop, obviously. So now, so now white has just in one swoop uh, recovered all the material he has sacked, and he still has a crushing attack. All right, so... so um, So okay, so so black's like okay, I'm gonna attack your queen here. Wow, is there anywhere this queen can even go to safety, or is it just is it just over? See, this is this is when you guys see. I've seen I've seen players rated like 1,200 and lower. Okay, you know they get into a position where they're actually like plus 20. The computer's probably yelling that they're plus 20. And if, if white can't find his one and only move, guess what? He gives up and resigns, OK? So you really need to be resourceful when you play chess, all right? Because you might be like, oh, man, I, uh, I can't find a, a move here. I mean, it looks like my queen's lost. Because if it goes there, it's gone. Moves there, it's gone. Moves there, it's gone. Moves there, it's gone. Move anywhere on the D file, it's gone, right? So, do we just give up? I hope the answer is no. <laughs> so, what's the only move white can make to save the queen and throw in a checkmate on top of it to even add insult to injury? I'll save the queen and I'll th throw in checkmate. So knight takes f7. So, so if knight takes f7, OK, so unfortunately, the rook would take the queen. And will we take with check? King moves. I mean, we can still, we can still try from here. At least we get to still play. But we don't have our queen anymore. <laughs> and we like our queen. Let's see what the computer actually says about this position. I mean, it's got to say black's winning, but you can't you can't take the pawn here, right. or else you get you get crushed. Yeah, you get rope. So let's see. And I'm I'm thinking they'll probably just play a uh, knight knight here, and they'll be okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what what uh what the computer says. This will be this will be interesting. Um, my money is on. Well, well, they kind of like. Well, let's see what they say after my move. Maybe, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll really like white after my move. So they like knight h6. Let's see after knight to, to e7, the moment of truth, what, what it says. Oh, it hates it. Oh, because it allowed knight to f7, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, so knight h6 has to be played. Or king to c7. 
<laughs> All right, but, but it's still equal. So, so luckily, your move didn't lose the game. So that's good. <laughs> that's nice. But you have, you have a move that's, that, you know, you still have a really good fighting chance, uh, but, but you have better. So that was probably the second best move. So Mari is just going to give up. He's like, I can't save the queen. I'm moving you knight to c7. Or c, sorry. Uh, d7. 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 Excellent. And now, now the computer's going crazy. It loves that move. It's like, yes. Well, it, it should love it more than, I mean, it loves it. But it, <laughs> it doesn't love it as much as I thought. <laughs> it's only giving you up. It's not even t saying you're up a touchdown. When you're obviously just crushing. So now, it probably doesn't see the next move. So now black plays the dubious knight to f6 here. Stopping queen to f8, checkmate, but totally missing a checkmate in two. And remember, like in the previous game, you know, we can have dreams about sacrificing, you know, our are little pieces that are worth one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points to win the nine billion point piece. So, what move do we want to make to win the whole game? Mate in two, white. And remember, don't be afraid to give up material. So the way you look at this is you calculate, you look for your checks and your captures, right? Checks and captures. So, so I see like, well, like one, two, three, four, five. I see five checks on the board. All right, check one, check two, check three, check four, check five. You find and then you just calculate from there, from those five variations. And it's a main two puzzle, so go from there. Notice, this king can't move at all, right? Can't go there, can't go there, can't go there, can't go there. Because the knight's got that square, so all you have to do is essentially put him in a check. And uh, he's going to be done for. Move the rook up. Yeah, move the rook up all the way, right? As far as it can go. And then checkmate. Right? Excellent. All right, good job. All right. So did everybody see, see in that game where Black's priorities in the opening were backwards, right? He was like trying to trap the bishop. Then he was attacking the knight on the queen's uh, side. And uh, White took advantage by busting open the center getting his rook and queen on the open files uh, toward the enemy king and just decimating them, okay? So that was, that was good. So we were doing kind of defense in the beginning of the game here, but now we'll see defense. You have to play defense throughout the whole game, obviously, right? All right, so let's check it out, okay? We got about 10 minutes for this one. All right, we'll do it. E4, E5. My, uh, my student is uh, Guo playing uh, the black pieces, so let's, let's watch it from his, uh, his great perspective here. Knight F3, Knight C6. Uh, Bishop B5 attacks the, uh, the knight. I did a, my most popular video on YouTube is all about the uh, Roy Lopez, so you can check it out as, as I uh, explain why at your guys' level, bishop a4 is uh, not as good as bishop takes c6, doubling the pawns and making, uh, making black's uh, life miserable. OK, knight f6, d3. So b5, he can't resist attacking the, uh, the bishop, right? OK, so bishop back. And now the bishop is eyeing this crucial f7 square. Okay, so, so if he just ignores it and plays like bishop to b7, now uh, the knight can come in and uh, 
we can get into a fried liver type uh, position here. So he doesn't want that to happen. So he immediately plays the move uh, d5, because we've uh, gone over the fried liver extensively. So, so now white plays the move c3 here. And uh, did that address anything that uh, black just played? So black's last move was the move d5. Does c3 correspond to that at all? The answer is no. OK, so, so whenever somebody makes a move, right, you should ask yourself, why did he play that? Oh, he did that to attack my pawn. I better do something about that. Either capture it, protect it, protect it, something, right? Instead, he's like, c3. All right, fine, fine. If you don't want to do it, if you don't want to take it, I'll take it. So takes the pawn, capture back. Whenever you got these queens in a line like this, and it's your move, I mean, more often than not, just take it with check, OK? And uh, you know, so he plays bishop takes, knight takes. And now white plays a really tricky move. Plays the move bishop to b3. All right. So look at that position. So, 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 what is white's big threat here? It looks like he just played bishop to b3, no big deal. Well, yeah, you play h6 in this position to stop, uh, or, or your favorite f6 to stop the knight from coming to g5, yeah. and you're going to get burned. All right. What's chess all about, right? The lines. What's on the same line? And what move did he, what piece did he just move? The light squared bishop. So where do you think that light squared bishop really wants to go? To f7. You still think f7. Do we have any others? Uh, any other ideas here? Where that bishop wants to go? D5, yeah, on the same line as all of black's pieces, right? So if you play like h6, boom, you just got forked, OK? And if you save that one, boom, you lose another piece, all right? So you got to watch out for that. When you got all these pieces on the same line, you got to wait. They want to punish you with that. OK, so, so now. You finally identified the threat, right? So that's step one, Mario. Step two is how are you going to stop this from being a reality? Bishop e6. It looks dreadful, but I think it is the best move. Well, bishop b7, I guess, might work. Even knight to c5. But, but you, know, you know, it stops it, right? So obviously he takes and doubles your pawns. This is not, uh, not the pawn structure you're looking for, right? Uh, double isolated e pawns. Double pawns are generally weaker than uh, regular pawns because they can't protect each other. And uh, not very good. All right, and you know if you know if they become a target, guess what? You know this knight has to sit and guard them the whole time instead of just pawns protecting other pawns. You want pawns protecting pawns, not uh, not your major pieces because they they got to do damage. You know. Okay. So white plays the move bishop g5. Black decides not to take it and decides, hey, I'm going to get my own threat, bishop to c5. So how should white actually uh, counter this threat here? What's the best way? Because now he's got two men on uh, f2, the knight and the bishop, and he's only got one defender. Castle, castle right. Yeah, excellent, Mario. So castle, and then if he takes, takes, check, king takes, and uh, 
white, even though you trade six for six, now white has more pieces than black. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you never want to be trading two for one. Unless you're getting a queen, then you can trade two for one all day. Okay, so, but white saw how great uh, Guo just defended uh, F7, so he decides to copy him. And so he's like, all right, I'll take. And now, you see, this is now an isolated pawn. It's kind of just as bad as a double pawn, as, as no pawn can uh, protect him. All right, so uh, black plays h6, doesn't want uh, anybody coming into g5. Knight b to d2, attacks the knight, retreats to d6. He decided to castle long. Yeah, that's why he played a5 to get an attack going. Okay, and now b3, and now he castles. So now you got an interesting position here. You got, uh, you got the king on the king side and this king on the queen side. So, so they're going to go for it, okay? So rook d to f1, rook d to f1. All right, so now he's going to try to get his guys. So now, what do you think the last thing black should do here? Like, what would be the worst plan that black could ever come up with? How about moving the pawns in front of the king? <laughs> but that's what's played, it, and, um, and it makes his, his move look genius, because he wants to double the rooks, but now he uh, inadvertently put the knight into a pin. So after g4, if the knight moves, bye-bye rook, okay? So, so he, he decides uh, double his dudes and uh, take, rook takes. Look, black just got up a uh, knight for a uh, pawn. So of course we want to trade everything. Trade, trade, trade. When you're up, trade. Rook takes f3. So if you're up, if you're up, if you're up and he's up, guess what? He wants to trade, right? So offer another trade, rook f8. All right, so now rook to b, g3, check, okay. So this is, this is going to be a huge part in this game, right? White just checked black. All right. So you could, you could go to the center and get knight checked some more, maybe. Or you could just uh, go to uh, h7 and be safe for the rest of the game. Maybe. Well, what do you like? What do you like? Do you want, you want to have it so, so your king is stuck? and only has two spaces to go, or up, and you know, maybe eventually he might check me on c5 with a knight, but I'll have all these nice squares to go to. And just, just you know, you can check me all day, look at all these flight squares I have. Or do you wanna just be like, I hope, I hope he doesn't get a checkmate here. So what, you wanna, you wanna put your king in the corner, or get your king free? Like if you go here, he gets, he gets you a check, and then all, the only check you might, if you get your king ever to here, he might check you over here. But yeah, the, the, the bottom line is you, you want your king uh, to have many, many opportunities to escape. Uh, it's not like he's got a queen coming down that can get you over here. So king to h7 here. And uh, white plays c4, so take, take, rook f2, um, attacks two pieces that are uh, protected, so not, not very scary. So he attacks the knight, knight to f5, attacking the rook and the pawn. So rook to g4, knight takes e3, rook g3 attacks the knight. Knight takes g2. So he's feeling good. But now it allowed white to get an attack going, finally. All right, knight to e4, obviously, right? Attacks the rook. Rook to f1, check. And so now he plays king to b2. Okay. And now he plays rook to f4. Notice, notice in this position, if he decided, you know, my knight's under attack, right? 
I'll just move my knight to safety. Okay? How would white, even though he's down a piece and a, and a pawn or two, two of those glorious uh, isolated past pawns, what would... Well, well, I take it all back. I take it all back. If he played rook to g1 to protect the knight here, okay? Now this is the position I really want you to look at. What move would uh, white make to checkmate in two? And remember, checkmate in two. We all know how to solve those pretty easy now. We look for the checks. And we see, hey, he's got three checks, all right? And then we calculate out which one actually works. So this check doesn't work. Uh, this check, he gets taken. So yeah, Mario, you beat me to the punch. You're so good. Knight of six. And then king here. Dude, does everybody see a checkmate? Yeah, all because he decided to leave his king in the corner. Uh, yeah, a Cobian does that to, to people all the time. <laughs> Is that good? Okay, so, so luckily Black decided, hey, I'll do the uh, the threat greater or equal to my own, right? Because my uh, my knight's under attack, and he's got this this nasty knight f6 check maybe coming. So after check, I'll just attack his knight, and um, so now he's like knight to c3. Rook to b4 check. So now we know. Now we know. Should white play king a1, king a3, king c2, or king c1? Should he, you, think, you think he should be like, oh, I saw, I saw my good friend Guo doing this. I'll just put my king in the corner. Nothing bad's ever going to happen here. So that's what he plays. He decides, hey, it's working out so well for Guo, the king in the corner. I'll put my king in the corner. Now, now this is a little tougher. This is a little tougher. This is a maiden two problem. It might be a little help, but, but it's essentially a maiden two problem. So, so can white's king move in this position? It's a yes or no question. No, he can't move anywhere, okay? So, so when a king can't move, it's stalemated essentially. All you have to do is put that king in check and it's mate, it's over, kaput. Okay, so now, now you're like, all right, our rook's doing a great job. So if our rook would ever give him a check on this A file, guess what? The king can go to the B file and be free. Okay, so, so guess what? The checkmate piece isn't gonna be the rook. Okay, so, so unfortunately, Mario, that would be nice, but oh, he just lost, we just lost our knight, and oh, but okay, but, but you were thinking, we're thinking, if we can get a knight on c2, it's mate, okay, but that's not the knight. So what, what move are you going to play in this position? So Mario figured out, hey, if I can put my knight on c2, or even a knight on uh, c4, but knight c2 is what we're looking for. So, so how can we get a knight to c2? Let's get it, let's get it done. Anybody got any ideas? We want to get a knight to this square. E1, e go to E1 first, right? And uh, the only way he can protect C2, right, is to play rook to G2. I bet if I turn on the computer, that's what it's screaming about. And um, if he plays that, you would just take it. Say he plays rook to E3, and uh, the game is over, checkmate. So, so in the end game, it's good to have an active king toward the center, not stuck, you know, on the middle of the board or on the side of the board where he uh, essentially cannot move. All right.